the Age of Empires patch that everyone has been waiting for is finally here. Welcome to Edge of everyone, and here's a quick summary of the most important things in the now live winter update. Let's dive right in. Two new features have graced us. The first one is the ability to enable in-game player score on a match-by-match -match basis for custom lobby multiplayer and skirmish matches. Please note that the latter games will still hide player scores for players, and I think that's a good thing. The second feature is the ability to view the map after the game has ended. It's funny that this had to be a feature added post-launch in my opinion, but hey, it's finally here and it's better late than never. They also mentioned that the ability to toggle back and forth between the map and the end screen is something that they will add down the line in Spring 2022, so keep that in mind. A plethora of changes were also made to the minimap as well to make it easier to read. I think it looks much cleaner now and these list of changes were much needed. Overall, you should have an easier time reading the minimap now. Furthermore, the infamous Chinese Dynasty bun is finally moved to the side to the bottom left corner. I think its location and size are now perfect. One other very, very important improvement was made to the hitboxes. They are much more generous now, so misclicking to set up rally points or instructing villagers is now a thing of the past. I've tested it out and it's so much better now to click on sheep. Good job devs on this one. Alright, with those out of the way, let's get into the balance changes. Spearmen get two important buffs. First, their damage output is increased from 3 times to 3.5 times against cavalry units, but the most important change here is the fact that the spearmen will now automatically get into the brace position against cavalry when you use the attack move. This is a massive change that will lift the need to micro each spearman to tank cavalry charges, and players will really need to be careful in taking engagements against the spearmen now. Crossbows get a significant buff against heavy units as well, up from 6 to 9 and 8 to 11 for its regular and elite versions damage respectively. The horsemen puzzlingly get a big nerf. They did get an additional pierce armor to help against range units in the early game, such as the longbow rush of the English, but their HP is significantly reduced from 125 to 100, 155 to 125, and 190 to 155 for the early, veteran, and elite versions respectively. I honestly think the Norsemen were already fine as is, so nerfing their mid to late game this heavily might mean that we won't really see them in play anytime soon. Hand cannons get a nerf as well to their damage, down to 35 from 42. The ram also gets a much needed rework. They are now slower and have less HP, but its pop space is reduced to 1 and its pierce armor is doubled. This means that the rams got nerfed early game, but buffed for the late game, which I think is a great change overall. Mangonels also get a weird buff. I'm not sure they needed this, but their reload times went down from 8.75 seconds to 6.75 seconds. The French Rebaldequin also gets a rework, being much tankier against melee units, but less so against ranged ones. Moving on to the water, there's two good changes here as well. Fishing boats are nerfed by adding 15 more wood to their cost, and demo ships now take twice the damage from arrow ships. I still don't think this is enough to nerf the demo ships themselves, but that's a topic for another video. Finally, the arrow slits for outposts have their ranged buff from 6 to 8, elite army tactics effect increase from 10 to 20, and all elite rank technologies research time reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. Hence, faster imperial age times might be more viable now to get a tech advantage over your opponents. Alright, now let's get into the civilization specific balance changes. The Abbasids have the Phalanx, Composite Bow, and Camel Handling technologies moved out of the House of Wisdom and into the Barracks, the Archer Range, and the Blacksmith respectively. Overall, this should make their game much more fluid. For the Chinese, the official's tax collection cooldown is halved from 30 to 15 seconds. The Chu Canoes are also changed significantly. Their food cost is reduced by one third. That's down to 20 from 60 food. To offset this massive buff, their HP is reduced across the board, but this is a net buff to them regardless. The nest of bees are also slightly reworked. They now move slightly faster, have longer minimum range, have lower HP, train 5 seconds faster and deal 2 more damage. Finally, pyrotechnics technology is moved from the siege workshop to the university. Overall, the Chukunu change is very interesting and we will definitely see more of them on the field in this patch. Moving on to the Delhi Sultanate, the Sanctity technology is moved from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, which nerfs the early plays for the Delhi. Furthermore, a massive change is implemented to the research times. In case you didn't know, the Delhi Sultanate can research all technologies free of charge. To offset this advantage, they research them much slower. Previously, there was a 5x multiplier to research speed across the board. However, starting with the Winter Patch, they will now only have 3.5x research time penalty for the Dark and Feudal Age, have the same 5x penalty for the Castle Age, but have a whopping 15x research time for the Imperial Age. This means that the early game of the Delhi Sultanate should be much smoother and stronger overall, and this should hopefully lead to a much more comfortable mid-game to afford the necessary scholars to offset the now ridiculous 15x time penalty in the Imperial Age. It's an interesting change, but I think it's better than the previous system. 
The English get one change and it's a massive one. Longbows can no longer hear from camps if they enter combat. This is the perfect change in my opinion as healing in the middle of combat so easily was a bit too overpowered. Good stuff. The awaited French water nerf is also here. The French Hulk's armor is down to 2 from its original 6. I'm not sure if this change alone will stop them from ruling the seas, but we'll find out soon enough. The Holy Roman Empire also gets a much needed nerf to their emergency repairs ability. The cooldown of that ability is now up to 60 from 45. The Mongols get two small nerfs, raid bounties are reduced by 50 for both versions, and the Khan's ability no longer affects siege units attack speed. That said, they can at least move their landmarks once they hit the 200 population limit, so that's a nice change. Finally, the Rus Boyar's Fortitude technology moved from the Stable to the Blacksmith, and the Ladia ships get a nerf to their movement speed during their roll switch, which is a good change. That was all there is regarding the balance changes. On top of this, there are a plethora of map changes, but it's a bit too long of a list to go through. Since map generation has been quite weak and inconsistent, the patch mainly focused on those changes. I'll link the patch notes in the description below for you to go through all of the changes in case you're interested. And finally, the most important thing, the bug fixes. Starting with the general changes, the infinite stone bug from T-shaped walls is fixed, which is great news. This did cause an unintended side bug though, and I'll cover that tomorrow separately in a short. Mongols can now unpack a destroyed packed landmark to repair it, the Rus can no longer duplicate infinite relics, thank goodness, the market trade exploit has been fixed by preventing multi-selected markets from issuing multiple buy-sell commands in a single click, berry bushes can no longer be stomped by buildings, crossbowmen no longer gain plus one range after gaining the incendiary arrows technology, and most importantly, the Tower War Elephant has been renamed to Tower Elephant. There are other minor bug fixes as well, and you can go through them in the link of the description. There are also civilization-specific bug fixes as well. Starting with the Abbasids, Camel Barding finally provides armor to the camels as it didn't before. Imams with the Faith technology can no longer convert enemy religious units, Faith ships now correctly generate bonus resources, Tier 3 Golden Age now correctly reduces the production time of all units and not just the first tier of each unit type, Elite army tactics and bootcamp upgrades now correctly stack with one another. Camel unit base armor has been properly applied. Armored caravan no longer provides siege armor and correctly provides ranged armor instead. Bootcamp upgrade no longer increases the attack speed of archers. And improved processing no longer provides plus 100% bonus to stone collection. Moving on to the Chinese, reload drills technology now correctly modifies the attack speed of bombards, officials can now supervise keeps, universities, and blacksmiths, towers with the extra materials technology will no longer repair enemy walls, and I honestly didn't even know this existed, and Jukunu now has its wood cost reduced when trained from a building within the aura of the spirit way. For the Delhi Sultanate, Honed Blaze technology now provides the advertised benefit and no longer adds an extra plus one damage to man at arms. Keep emplacements are no longer affected by the Scholar Research System, which is fantastic. Tower Elephants no longer gain the Force March ability, and they now gain the Armor Visual Upgrade when researching Siege Elephant technology instead of the Armored Beasts. Note that this is purely visual. The English have only one specific interaction fixed, which were that palings and camps used to be activated on top of stone walls. This has been fixed and can no longer be done. Moving on to the French, the range of the French Royal Rebaldequin has been reduced to match the standard version of the unit. Enlistment Incentive Technology now provides the intended plus 5 additional cost reduction to the French influence mechanic, Gunpowder Technology now applies correctly to the French Gallius, and Royal Cannon now receives the intended plus 20 bonus damage. For the Holy Roman Empire, buildings constructed within the influence area of the Palace of Swabia can now use the Emergency Repairs ability. The Elsbach Palace can now activate the Emergency Repairs ability while in range of the Holy Roman Empire influence, the Elsbach Palace now correctly receives a 33% damage reduction. The ranged armor of the HRE keeps has been reduced to match other civilizations. Two-handed weapons technology will no longer give mana terms plus 15 health. Depositing more than 5 relics into the Holy Roman Empire docks will no longer increase naval attack speed past 25%. Emplacements now have discounted gold cost. And finally, bonus damage provided by the heavy maces and the two-handed weapons technologies now stack correctly, which is great. The Mongols, oh the Mongols, can no longer run around with their packed buildings as superior mobility is now fixed. Improved wheelbarrow can now be researched in the Dark Age, the production cost of Double Trader has been corrected, cost to double produce a number of Mongol units has been fixed, Kaganet Palace no longer spawns early Lancers, and the cost of improved Professional Scout Stone has been fixed. And finally, the Rus. Rus Scouts hunting weapons now benefit from the Professional Scouts bonus, Lodja transport ships and fishing ship conversions no longer have the H2 requirement, Incinerary Arrows no longer increases the attack speed of Rus Lodja arrow ships, 
Professional Scout Technology now provides plus 200% damage to Ruse Scouts. Elite Men at Arms now have the correct attack speed. Lodia Trade Chips now cost an additional 100 wood and Spearmen can now finally activate Spearwall correctly. Out of all those changes, you should have noticed a few things. One, the court's architect's bug of refunding more resources back on building foundations has still not yet been fixed, but this is something Relic is currently working on. And second, the Springles are still untouched. This is super surprising as the community's consensus was that they were OP and needed to be tuned down. Relic acknowledges that the Springles should remain as only an anti-siege unit and they are still tracking this issue for some reason. Regardless, Springles remain unchanged for the time being. Well, that's pretty much it folks. There are some more minor changes here and there that I skipped, but I've covered all of the important things that you need to know about the winter update. Overall, this is a much needed update that we've all been waiting for and it's great to see a lot of these bugs finally cleaned up. There's still quite a long way to go as there are still many bugs to iron out, but this is a good first step. Let me know in the comments below about what you think about the winter update. As always, thanks for watching everyone and don't forget to like and subscribe to always stay up to speed with Age of Empires content. Take care everyone and see you all in the next one.